Hello everybody, it's April week one and so of course time for a brand new prompt in the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium. Now the prompt for this month is nature. April is quite a significant um, season, change of season for many of us. Um, lots of us are going into our spring season and for those of you in Australasia I know it's the start of your autumn so it just made sense to carry this prompt throughout um, the whole of April. The challenge for this week is trees and you can in interpret this in any way you like if you want to collage a tree paint a tree um you know just interpret it in any way you like now this week i'm going to be working on one of these picture framing mount boards you've seen me use these before i did them for the um oh gosh was it nautical prompt i think it was last year and i thought i might do another series of these throughout this month so these are what they look like they came on this peg here which i just take off all of them have got um these stickers on which signify the color number the easiest way to get stickers off is to just heat it gently with your heat tool um, and then the glue will start to melt and they come really easily off so not that it would really make any difference because I'm going to cover it up anyway but you know I like to know that it's gone now for my background I'm using a photocopy of one of my master boards um, purely by accident I ran it through my photocopier and didn't realize that it was on um, reduced by 60 or reduced to 66 percent um, but that's okay the color is slightly different as well just because my printer is running out of ink but I'm happy with that and so I just want to glue this onto um, my master board now the easiest way to do it what am I going to do I'm going to use some watered down um, glue I'm just going to apply that all over the base of this picture framing mount board like so making sure that I get plenty on the edges so let's get plenty all over the edges so that it um, doesn't peel peel up there we go quite um quite a generous um, layer let's move that um, out of the way now wh which way around do I want to have this um, I think I want it this way round. So the easiest way to do it is, is to flip this piece of paper over and just press it down onto the back. And I am just going to weight this down um, underneath a heavy book for a minute or two. I shall put um, another piece of deli paper there just to protect it. And let me just grab them. I've just got um, a couple of books. I'm going to weight that down for a minute or two. Now that's been weighted down for four or five minutes or so. Um, now what I want to do is just cut um, carefully around the edges, just getting rid of most of the excess. And then I'll take an emery board and just file the remainder of the excess away. Um, that makes a really nice, neat job of it. It also helps to um, make sure that it's sealed at the edges and you haven't got um, any loose bits um, anywhere. So we'll just trim this one down slightly as well. Um, and then, as I say, let me just move move that out of the way. What have I done with my emery board? I did have one to hand. And so now I'm going to take this over my bin and I'm just going to file away the edges. And it just comes away really easily. And of course, that's burnishing the edges down as well. There we go, all nice and neat. All I want to do now, of course, all of my um, master boards here have got um, a hole punched in the top. Um, let me just grab my pokey tool. Hang on, we've um, got some bits here and I need to be able to see where that hole is. Let's just get rid of get rid of those. I'm just going to repunch um, that hole. And then if I do decide to um, do this as a series, I'll be able to pop um, a book uh, binding ring through these to hold them um, all together. I'm just going to go over that, <sighs> that again a couple of times just to make sure that I've got it um, nice and neat. I've got the same problem. I've got that piece of paper clogging up the hole. Let's do it from this side um, this time just there we go that's better nice and nice and neat now because i've printed this out on my inkjet printer i want to seal it i'm just going to do that with some um, matte medium let me just um, dry my paintbrush i've just had that soaking in um, a cup of water um, i'm just going to work on a piece of deli paper to catch the excess glue and in fact what i will do is I'm just going to apply some repositionable um, glue on the back just to hold it down just so that it doesn't um, slip around then I can peel this straight off um, afterwards there we go and I'm just going to use some of the Winsor & Newton Galleria matte medium over the top 
just to seal it and it's just easier to take the matte medium to the board um, and just spread it spread it all over like this and this will just add um, a seal to that um, background so that I can add more detail over the top just smooth that out nice and um, nice and neatly and I'm just going to dry this with my um, heat tool just for a second or two and then I'll flatten it um, underneath the book again um, just um, in case we've got any slight um, warping. I like mine nice and um, nice and flat. Now you may remember um, this master board here with a few others um, is in the free printable section in the Facebook group the Mixed Media Emporium so if anybody wants to download this feel free to go and find it. You'll find it in the albums and it's in an album Album called free printables it, there's this one here and several others that you can download if you want to now, as much as I love this background as it is I do want to tone down some of the detail slightly and I'm going to use just two colors of paint I've got one of the Dina Wakeley media acrylics in olive and I've also got a Dela Rowney graduate acrylic in Payne's grey you can see that I've just put um, a really small um, amount just onto my glass mat. I might need a tiny bit more of the um, olive. Let's, um, we can always add more if we need to. And I've just got um, a jar of plain water here. I'm going to start off with the, with the green and I'm just watering it down to create um, a glaze. And all I'm going to do is start off at the bottom and I'm just going to work that paint backwards and forwards all the way all the way up like this to about about there going back down again oh here comes Louie can you hear him meowing just just like that make sure we've got no blobs in there that's fine rinse my paintbrush out and I'm just going to do exactly the same with the Payne's grey but working my way from the top all the way down Just like this so you can still see all the lovely detail underneath in fact let me just grab um, a piece of kitchen towel go with me yeah <clears throat> let's dab some of some of this off again we'll come in from the top just try and get rid of any of these puddles that we've got going on at the side just working my way down um, this time but I don't want to add so much paint that I just get rid of the whole of this background so I'm pretty happy um, with that I'm just going to go over it um, one more time I just want to come down a bit lower with that Payne's that Payne's grey tapping off some of the um, excess again let's just come down a bit lower with that this time it's all go here. Sam's just um, come home from, from work. He's home from university for Easter, which is absolutely fantastic. And before I forget, I just want to wish everybody a very happy Easter for tomorrow. So let's just do this. That um, is enough. I'm going to get rid of some of those puddles um, at the side. And then I'll add another layer of that green at the, at the bottom. Let's just um, do this. And then I'm just going to leave it be. I'm not going to be tempted to do anything else with it. I like that exactly as it now, is. This has had a really good dry and I'm totally happy with how that looks. Let me just show you the difference. I photocopied um, another version of the original masterboard. So this is how this one started out. And you can just see how much more cohesive um, it's become. This, I want to become a silhouette background. Love, love, love how that looks. I do want to um, add um, some white splatters though I'm going to use some white gouache any brand of gouache will do I'm just going to use this because I've taken the other palette um, off to the sink to clean this paintbrush is disgusting <laughs> it's starting to peel all over the place let me just put um, a good amount of gouache on there like that um, right have I got any spray water here we go we'll just give that a couple couple of squirts just to water this down slightly what can i use to um splatter with hang on let's just um grab this this is one of my um, bone folders that will do nicely and i'm just going to splatter all over the background and this will brighten it um as well I mean, I know that we'd normally have a clear sky. It doesn't matter. This is abstract and I just like the way it looks. And I'm just going to have to get rid of all of those red flaky bits from my paintbrush. 
I want more splatters at the top than I do at the bottom. That's good for me. And I'm just going to give this um, a good dry with my heat tool. And then hopefully those red bits will just brush off. That one's now dry. And I just want to add a moon in the top right hand corner. I've used my one inch circle punch just to um, chomp a circle out of a piece of cardstock here like this. I'm going to use my Hero Hues, which is a white um, pigment ink pad. So we've got this got my mini um, blending tool here let's just wipe off some of the excess I don't want this to be too bright and I'm just going to go round there like that that is cool now of course I've got some um, overhang that's fine we can just um, rub rub that off there we go gone um, and again I'll just heat set that with the heat tool I just want to brighten that up a bit I want to use um, a white chalk pastel for this um, mine are the inscribe um, pastel brand really cheap brand that you've seen me use many times before I haven't had these out for quite a while though I must admit just going to go over that um, just to give a really hazy effect I'll need to um, spray this with some varnish <laughs> Let's just blow away the excess. And then I've just got the um, the solid punch from that same punched out circle. And what I'm going to do now is just go round the um, outside like, like this. And this will give a really cool sort of hazy, hazy effect. Let's just do this really ethereal. I love this. There we go. Isn't that just cool? Love that. And where we've got that gap, I'm just going to rub that gently with my finger like, like this. I think that's a beautiful effect. Really wispy. I'm really happy with that. Love how that looks. Now I want to mix some paints together. I'm going to use the Payne's Grey again and some of the olive. I want to paint my tree in the background. Whoops, that's way, way too much, but, um, but never mind. Um, I want to add some olive to that as well. So we'll add some of this and I'm just going to mix those two paints together. I'm just going to use that same paintbrush, which I have sanded down. You can see I've got rid of most of that um, paint. Um, and I'm just going to mix this together. Um, I think it's really nice because I've got these colours in the background as well. That's um, that's really good. That's perfect. Let's um, get rid of some of the excess paint on my paintbrush. Here we go. I've got my pot um, at the ready, my pot of uh, dirty, dirty water. And now this is where I hold my breath and um, paint my tree. Let's just put the water there just to weight everything down. I've still got glue on the back of this um, just because I haven't wiped it off yet. So I'm just going to press that down just so that this doesn't move. And let's try and paint um, a tree. So um, this paintbrush is really fine at the tip, which is exactly um, what, what I want. And so I'm just going to hold my paintbrush really loosely. I've done this in the past and it works um, really well. And, you know, not overthinking it, I'm just going to paint myself some branches. Like this. Most of this will get covered up um, anyway. The blossoms are on the trees here now and they just look absolutely fantastic, just gorgeous. And so this is the effect that I'm going to try and um, aim for. So let's have a look here. I need to thicken out that branch just um, ever so, that trunk ever so slightly. Here we go. Leaving room at the bottom to do something um, with. But that's, um, that's good enough for me to start off with. Keep it really, really simple if you want to do this kind of um, technique. We don't want to um, overcomplicate it. And I don't want to do any more than that and end up ruining it. Ruining it. I'm just trying to thicken up some of the um, branches here at the bottom. Too much paint on there and it's too thick. So water it down slightly. The thickness of the paint adds loads of texture anyway, so that's cool by me. Love that as it is. I'm going to um, give that a dry. 
Now, looking outside, now that it's starting to get dark here, we've got loads of trees in our garden and across the fields that are in blossom. And what I can see is very light green um, of the leaves that are starting to come through. They're not quite developed yet, so I do want to just add a tiny bit of, of green, but not too much, just to represent the um, new buds. Um, I don't want much um, of this just like this. And I've got four Q-tips here just um, bunched together. So we'll add a few of these, just going in with a really light, light touch here, just to add um, a few. And then the blossoms on our trees are either pink or white. Most of the ones that um, we've got um, around here are white. Um, so I think that's the colour I'm going to go for. But I do want just um, a touch of that green showing through as well. Let's just do this and these will need to be near the branches because that's where they that's where they are. There we go. And again, I'm just going to give this a dry with my heat tool. And now that I've given that a dry with the heat tool, I'm going to flip my Q-tips over and I'm just going to add some white. So just flattening this out. Um, I don't want um, really thick layers of white paint. We're just going to Add some white blossoms like this, which would just look so pretty. Our trees are covered in this gorgeous white, white blossom. It looks beautiful. And so I'm just going to keep going like this. And I think I'll probably put this on to fast forward just so that you can see how many I add without it um, getting too boring for you. happy with how that looks and you can see that I'm just adding a few touches of that green um, just to add a bit of interest I like how that looks um, and now what I want to do is um, add some more of the um, the, the, the greeny grey blacky colour at the bottom just to ground my tree because of course at the moment you can see that it's just floating in thin air so what I'm going to do is just gradually just bring my trunk out like this, try and ground my tree like this. Here we are, just playing around with this until, until I'm happy with how, how it looks. I don't want to overdo this. I don't want to try too hard and I do still want to see some of that gorgeous background um, underneath as well. Now I have altered this slightly. I decided that I wanted a few peachy coloured um, blossoms as well and I've also altered the shape. I just felt it was a bit puffbally. Um, really happy with that and I'm just adding a few details along the bottom here with just with some of that um, olive green. Here we go, just to break the bottom um, up a bit. I've done the same with them um, with white like that. I think all I want to do now is just add a few dots just at the bottom with my Signo Uniball pen. Here we go, just like this. Just finer details, just so that it's less blobby. And I don't want to alter around with that anymore. I think I've got to a stage where I like the way that it looks. Maybe add a few touches here and, you know, stop before you end up spoiling, spoiling it. I think I like that just, just the way it is. I know I said I was finished, but I'm just playing around with my chalk pastel again. It gets quite misty um, here at night and we get, you know, like a, a mist along the um, low level ground. I'm just adding some more of that chalk pastel. Let's see if this will, will work. It rubs off really easily if you don't like it. So nothing ventured, nothing, nothing gained. <sighs> see what this 
looks like we can have some more down here as well and then of course I'm going to need to seal this and I shall seal it with them um, a spray fixative I like the way that looks here we go let's just pull this up a bit blend it and um, blend it in I like it on the tree like that as well that is cool I'm going to spray that now oh, this has had a coat of spray fixative I've also added another piece of the masterboard paper on the back as well because it was covered in um, acrylic paint and looking really untidy so that's finished that off I've also inked around the edges in distress oxide in black soot so that's finished that off um, really nicely really happy with that so just to recap the prompt for this month is nature and this week's challenge is trees and as I said at the beginning of the video you can interpret this in any way you like use any medium um you know alcohol inks um which is something that um I may try in the, in the week I've got an idea for that um as well but you know just so many ways that this can be interpreted don't forget to go and check out Kylie's video as well and see what she's been up to this week because no doubt she's come up with something completely different to me but if you've enjoyed today's video as always I'd really appreciate a thumbs up it really does let YouTube know Know that you like what um, I'm doing let me know what you think in the comments below and subscribe as well if you're not subscribed already I'd really appreciate that but most importantly thanks for watching take care everyone and I'll see you all again soon bye for now